Right, good morning everyone. I think uh, we should start. It's 10.22 according to my uh, phone. I'm sure there will be people coming in while I uh, do some introductory uh, words. My name is Julian Richards. I'm one of the co-organisers of this session on digital infrastructures for archaeology, past, present and future directions. Also organised by Polly Wright, who's capturing us for Twitter. Uh, and the, uh, the the hashtag, if you are going to, to tweet, is the, the standard crack CAA hashtag, and then the session, I think we're at S22. Um, session is also co organised by Franco Nicolucci of Penn, who unfortunately can't be with us today. So, Polly and I will be uh, sharing the, the co chairing of the session because it's a you're in for a, a, a treat, but you're also in for a marathon if you stick with us throughout the day, because it goes on uh, all day through uh, after lunch and after coffee right to the end. But we've got a fantastic set of papers, many of which, or in fact, all of which are contributions, almost all, by contributions by members of the Ariadne Association, either as, as full members or associate members, um, and we're going to be talking about various efforts that people have made, either on an international or national level, on work on research infrastructures. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to give a very short uh, introduction to Ariadne and now Ariadne Plus, the next phase of Ariadne, uh, before uh, uh, handing over to our, our speakers. So infrastructure's past, and this does have a CAA uh, long pedigree. Those of you who are at CAA in Aarhus, and probably actually, maybe, is anyone, apart from me, is, is anyone at CAA in Aarhus? Yes, says that. Okay. Long time ago, anyway. But this was a diagram slide by Henrik Earl Hansen about his vision for the future of joining up uh, repositories and data sets uh, throughout Europe. I've no idea, idea why he chose the metaphor of uh, octopuses holding what, tentacles, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But he did, and that's stuck with us. And back in the prehistory of trying to do this, we had a relatively small project led by a city called Arena, which pulled together mainly some of our uh, Nordic partners, although Poland was a, a partner in Arena by the Poznan uh, Museum. And that was a sort of proof of concept for uh, joining up uh, data sets in, in Europe. And probably one of the first efforts to try and make those infrastructures interoperable. But despite the efforts there, we've largely seen the development of a series of silos, very good silos, but national infrastructures uh, that are very good for providing a national view of data sets, such as ADS and, and Dance and FASTI, and then Nabunkan in Japan, and Digital Antiquity in the United States, to name but a few. But they exist as as national uh, services largely, and as we all know, many archaeological research questions are broader than uh, national boundaries. So, this was the vision behind Ariadne: is to try and see how we could make uh, cross searches of those infrastructures possible in order to address some of the grand challenge research questions in archaeology that we wanted to, to pose that stand beyond national boundaries. So the first phase, Ariadne, ran from 2013 to 2017 with 23 partners and 18 countries. And just a few months ago in February, we were very pleased to, to kick off the, the, the large group of Ariadne Plus partners gathered in Prato for the kickoff meeting of Ariadne Plus, another four-year uh, infra project, which will run up to 2023, another six and a half million euros, but now 41 partners and 27 countries. So a much expanded uh, network. And we're extending 
geographically, most importantly, ex extending geographically beyond Europe to embrace Argentina, uh, Japan, and the United States as well, that don't even fit on the, on the map there. Uh, but we're also extending thematically. Um, we're extending in time to bring us right from the earliest uh, hominid days from paleoanthropology all the way up to contemporary <coughs> archaeology along this axis. We're extending in space to try and cover uh, all of Europe and beyond Europe. But we're also extending into a very, the broadest range possible of archaeological data, particularly focusing on areas that were maybe neglected a little bit in Ariadne in terms of archaeological science, in particular in bioarchaeology and environmental archaeology. But of course, extending thematically uh, extends the challenges and the problems that we have to do in trying to make some of that data interoperable. So we've set up a number of special interest groups that are already uh, active, covering a range of specific uh, data types who are going to try and address the challenge of how do we make data within those specific subdomains interoperable. We know that there is a demand for this. This was a user need survey conducted uh, by Gudrun Geyser from uh, Salzburg Research in Institute as part of the first Ariadne. I won't read through all the statistics there, but I'll just pick out there that 80% uh, of researchers agree that they often don't know what research data is available because it's stored in different places. 74% uh, thought it was important to have easy access, but the lack of institutional or uh, international repositories was seen as a, as a barrier. So that is really the, the user needs, why we're doing Ariadne, why we're doing Ariadne Plus. And our vision and roadmap is both to, as I've already mentioned, in fact, to extend geographically. Of course, this brings up a lot of multilingual language issues, but to extend in terms of uh, metadata, rich metadata, trying to standardize metadata and addressing some of the complexity uh, that comes uh, with that, moving beyond just flat uh, thesauri to quite complex hierarchical relations and, as you'll probably guess, this inevitably then involves using the, the CDOC CRM uh, to try and link together these data sets of, of many different data structures. And so we're continuing work that we've done on extending the CRM in particular areas. We have a, a, a data model which was first developed in Ariadne, has then been refined in a subsequent project, Parthenos, uh, which fit in, fitted in the gap between Ariadne and Ariadne Plus. Um, and we've been mapping data sets to that. That is it in turn uh, mapped with, with CDOT concepts uh, but we map subjects to the Getty AAT and periods are defined according to period O. So all defined in terms of um, uh, uh, URI concepts that we can uh, reference. There's the, the, the reference model from the top level uh, right down to quite specific extensions of the, of the, the CRM for the, the inference extension, but also science, buildings, archaeology, archaeo, uh, dig, geo. And there's a, a favourite diagram which shows the, the complexity of what we're trying to do in terms of integrating all these different things, but not creating another close, close silo, uh, linking via link data, making connections outwards to other uh, data sets. Uh, they're also online uh, with a registry where with all the data is held in, but then making it available via link data, but also via a, a, a portal. But then the data being provided by a multitude of different sources, whether they are themselves data centers and repositories, or um, uh, other portals, or institutional databases going down uh, 
to specific research projects that would be providing data upwards through that, that hierarchy. There's the, the, the famous portal, I hope you all had a look at it, it was launched at CAA in, in Oslo. Uh, and it's quite a powerful tool already, I think, in terms of uh, cross-searching, but there are plans in Ariane Plus to extend it, to develop it, to make it more useful, not just to put more data uh, in it, but particularly to extend some of the geographical uh, capabilities of it. Uh, we will also be uh, doing more transnational activity, training workshops to look out for advertisements for those. We'll be extending the Ariadne services, uh, so landscape uh, visualization, visual media services. Uh, we are also going to be doing more work uh, with uh, colleagues in the University of South Wales, but also uh, colleagues in CNR, and also looking at what other tools are available. We'll work on data mining using natural language processing uh, to enhance a lot of the uh, metadata uh, where uh, it's not available from uh, manual cataloging. Of course, we've got to pay due regard because since uh, Ariadne, uh, the FAIR principles have gained a huge amount of traction. Uh, if you're not aware of them, I would um, recommend you, you have a look at, uh, at the ideas behind FAIR data, that things should be findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And the Ariadne uh, infrastructure will be working according to those principles and trying to increase their take up in archaeology. All this needs to be underpinned then by, by standards. So we did work on developing the ADS and digital activity guides to good practice, created some additional ones in Ariadne. We'll be further updating them through Ariadne Plus and Allied projects. And we also as well now need to be plugged into the broader research infrastructure uh, network. So this is coming to the end of my introduction. This is part of the futures of infrastructures. You may be aware that there's a lot of investment now going on into this thing, the European Open Science Cloud, EOS, which Ariadne uh, is a small part of. This aims to cover all disciplines throughout Europe. In a way, we're part of one subset of that, which itself is vast, the Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud Shop, uh, which has also just uh, launched this this year, and that brings together a lot of the large infrastructures such as Cester and Clarin, uh, <coughs> Daria, and so forth. Uh, but also, uh, there is a, a potential new uh, infrastructure, ERIC, one of these uh, European instruments for for research infrastructure is in its preparatory phase, ERIS, Korean Research Infrastructure for Heritage Science, which sort of sits at the, at the other end of the humanities and social sciences and links much more to the sciences. And Ariadne also needs to be positioned with regards uh, to that in terms of its longer term sustainability. So that's the broader environment that we're working within. And also, uh, we're working closely with a new cost action at CIADA, Saving European Archaeology from a, a, a Digital Dark Age, uh, which is also launched this year. There's a lot of overlap between partners and the cost action will allow a lot of uh, networking activities, capacity building, and it's a way that partners in countries that aren't yet working within Ariadne can also participate. Uh, and take parts in conferences and, and workshops too. So also look out for that, because that is also a key part of that broader environment.